Okay, so we're in Philippians chapter 3, if, if anybody's new here. So, and uh, we're going to be, hopefully we're going to be wrapping up uh, uh, verses 3 through 7, Paul's Price for Christ. And uh, I'll read the, uh, the passages here, and then uh, we'll get into today's lesson. It says, uh, verses 7 through 11, But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is the righteousness of the law, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. So verse 8, I'll point out a word here and then we'll go into the phrase in, in verse 10 uh, that uh, we'll be discussing today. It says in verse 8, Yea, doubtless I count uh, all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. So Paul brings up this topic of suffering. And now if we go into uh, verse 10, it says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. So we're going to be talking about suffering as, uh, as a Christian. Uh, it's, uh, and I will fully admit right up front, this is probably a topic that I am not qualified to teach. I could read it from the Word of God, but when you start thinking about the suffering uh, for Christ, uh, I myself am a weakling, uh, and I think most American Christians are a weakling. We don't really know suffering. But uh, we'll talk about it. Now, I don't know anybody's personal life to the detail of any internal sufferings. So I cannot, I'm not qualified to say that anybody here does not suffer. Uh, also, I, can, I am qualified to say that I myself, when I look back at my Christian life and stuff, I suffered very little. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about God's grace in this. So let's go to uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, when we, we did a few weeks ago, we did a timeline, and, and I don't expect you to remember this, but uh, we did a timeline, and uh, Paul, uh, uh, and we know that somewhere around 35 AD, uh, Paul uh, was going on the road to Damascus and that uh, he got saved. And then we know around 49 AD that Paul and Barnabas went on their first missionary journey. Uh, they returned to Jerusalem around uh, 50 AD for the Council of Jerusalem. And then Paul and Barnabas had a fallout and Paul went with Silas went to Asia and then to Europe, uh, and that started around 50, 51 AD. Now, 2 Corinthians, a portion that I'm going to read here, and this is why we're doing the timeline, 2 Corinthians was written about 55 AD. Okay? So that's something to keep in mind. So uh, going a little bit further, we know that he returns back to Jerusalem, and then around 60 AD, well, uh, about 58 AD, he gets sent on his trip to Rome, and around 60 AD, he arrives in Rome, and then in uh, around 62 AD, he writes some other epistles, mostly to, to, uh, to Titus and to Timothy. He wrote Hebrews around that 60 time frame or whatever. So in context, when we read these scriptures in Corinthians, I want you to keep in mind that this is approximately halfway through his ministry. Uh, and then we'll, we'll talk about the sufferings that he did uh, or that he went through, that he documented. And this is only about halfway through. 
1 Corinthians was written around 54, uh, 2 Corinthians around 55, 56, okay? So in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, <clears throat> we'll start this, uh, this subject. It says, it is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such a, and one caught up in the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I, can't, I cannot tell. God knoweth. How that he was caught up in, into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for any man to utter. Of such a, an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. Uh, for though I would desire glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given me given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that I might depart from it, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, my, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that, I, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I will take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. So, Paul gives us an account, and we take the first half of that account, and there, bless you, there's some tremendous blessings there. Uh, as we talked about before, uh, how many people here have been called up to paradise and told things that nobody else has been told? Not yet. <laughs> I have. Okay. So, so there's a tremendous uh, there's a tremendous amount of blessings that Paul is, is is just poured upon Paul to receive these, and he talks about that he, he gets these revelations and uh, and and the abundance of what uh, the Lord sheds on him as far as knowledge and stuff. Now, but when it comes to that, Paul makes a very key statement here. Uh, if we go to uh, uh, verse 5, it says, As uh, uh, such of such and one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But he goes on in verse uh, uh, 6, it says, for though I would desire the glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. So Paul physically would like to brag about that. He's saying, I would like to, I would like the glory in that. I would like to receive the, the honor and the glory from other people because I was treated special. But he said that if I do that, what would he be? A fool. So he goes on and he, and he, and he says that, uh, but in, uh, let's see, uh, for I say a truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. So Paul brings up a, a, a subject here that uh, is very key into this discussion about suffering. He would Physically, in his flesh, his flesh would like to glory in it, but he won't because he knows that's foolishness. So it tells us in 1 Corinthians, I think it's chapter 9, that Paul, Paul makes it a point to bring his body into subjection. Remember, remember that verse? Is it by any means to be a castaway? Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> so, so what is subjection? Submission. The definition of subjection, anybody? Yielding. Yeah, it's it's yielding yourself to another power. So that's why uh, wives are so uh, are supposed to be subject to their husbands, right? Yield the authority over. So Paul tells us that he has 
the ability or the power for the most part, right? Because he's still flesh. But for the most part, Paul brings that in his body into subjection. But he goes on in Romans and he says, the good that I would do, I don't. And the, the, the bad that I don't want to do, I do. So it's not a totally 100%. But we see here in these verses that Paul makes it a special point that he's always trying to bring his body underneath subjection. Now he goes on to say, unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given me to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. This screams out a question that uh, uh, I, I'll give you the answer, but it, when you get saved, does God expect you to suffer? Does God, ex does God expect Christians to suffer? You think so? Anybody, anybody want to get out there and, okay? Yeah. If you, yes. If you live, no. Maybe. I think so. <laughs> if you live godly. To these yeah. Uh, yeah. Suffer. We're going to find out. So remember, we'll talk about this also. Remember when Paul was saved on that road to Damascus. Not only was he told about the three ministries that God expected from him, but he was also told something else. <laughs> Yeah, he's going to suffer. So, and it just kind of got me thinking or whatever. If, if when somebody witnessed to you uh, Jesus Christ for salvation, if they would have told you up front, let me share the gospel, let me share the good news that Christ died for you, shed his blood, and he rose so you could have eternal life. But if you take that, you are expected to suffer. How would that message be received? <laughs> um, how, <laughs> but, okay, so we're going to talk about this suffering because it's expected. God expects suffering from Christians. Now, why? Now, we read a very interesting verse here. How does, in this particular case with Paul, how is the Lord, how does the Lord arrange for the suffering of Paul here. Through Satan. Through Satan. Which tells you what? Satan's yeah, it tells you, yeah, it's, it's, that you're opened up to Satan for what God's going to allow. Okay? And the other thing is, is Satan can't do anything unless if God allows it. Which means, in the whole scheme of things, we talked about subjection. Who's subjected to God in that case? Satan. Satan can go only go so far. So, let's move on a little bit more here. It says, uh, verse, verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that I, it might depart from me. <laughs> so, Paul, this infirmity that Paul had, and I believe it had something to do with his eyes. I think his eyes were, uh, it was what Paul was talking about through other scriptures and Galatians and stuff, but it could have been something else also. But we know that there was something physically wrong with Paul. Uh, so, and, and, it, and it bothered Paul or affected Paul so much that he asked the Lord for uh, 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 to get rid of it, the Lord told him no. Then he said, asked a second time, and the Lord told him no. And old Paul, being the fighter that he was, he did what? He asked a third time. He wasn't going to let this thing go. <laughs> All right? So, but what's uh, interesting to see what the answer is here. It says, uh, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. So we can see here that the suffering that we're going to go through God is going to give you suffering or allow suffering, but it's not going to go unchecked. What is God going to provide for you? Strength. Well, yeah. We'll talk about that. Grace. 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 So you're expected to suffer, but God is going to supply the grace for this. And a perfect example would be 
I don't, I don't have the exact verses, but if you uh, read the account of Stephen the martyr, that when he was martyred, you see that Stephen just uh, kind of just knelt down or laid down with the face of an angel, and God gave him the grace to do what? Fall asleep. Just fall asleep. And, and he took that tremendous suffering. Imagine, imagine being stoned to death. I mean, that's, that's got to be a horrific, painful death. But God supplied the grace to get him through that. Now let's go on. It says, and he said unto me, my grace is, is sufficient for thee. Now notice, I, 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 I note here that, did Paul get a distinct answer the first time he asked? No. <laughs> did, he get, did he get a distinct answer the second time he asked? No. And the third time he asked, all right? The Lord, the Lord says, my grace is sufficient for thee. And then he says, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now, when I see the word weakness, it, it always, it's like a flashcard. When I see weakness, I see flesh. Those two words to me are eternally linked together. Right? We learned that uh, in our lessons last uh, recently or whatever. Your flesh is weak. Right? So, so. Now, uh, hear what, what uh, Paul and the Lord are saying here, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So, which goes back up to that other verse where you keep your body in subjection. So, uh, we'll go on. And it says, uh, most gladly, therefore, I, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So, in verse 6, Paul saying, in my flesh, it says, though I would desire to glory. Spiritually, though, in verse 9, he says, will I rather glory in my infirmities? The key word in this verse here is rather. What would you rather have? Would you rather have what Paul says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that he can receive what kind of reward? No, nope, that the power of Christ may rest upon him. So he's saying here that, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me? So in Paul's life, Paul had to make a constant decision. What would I rather have? Would I rather have the fleshly glory that he's talking about in verse 9? Or would I rather have the power of Christ that he's talking about in this verse? And we obviously we know what the answer is, that he would rather have the power of Christ. So, and that's a, that's a question I apply to myself. What would I rather have? Would I rather suffer and have the power, or would I rather yield to the, to the flesh and be weak? For Americans, I think this option is very easy. And we're going to see here the, the differences, the different types of sufferings that Paul says that uh, people can, can suffer for Christ. That's why suffering is personal, and we'll, and we'll talk about it. And we'll go on to verse 10. Therefore, I take pleasures in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. So Paul goes and he gives us a list of the types of sufferings Christ Christians are going to go through. Does anybody know what that first one was? Infirmities. Well, Infirmities. Okay. Does anybody know what an infirmity is? Uh, infirmity is part of the body that doesn't function properly. Yeah, it's, it's it <coughs> relates to your physical health. So an infirmity could be diabetes. It could be a broken leg. It uh, could be cancer. Uh, uh, it could be requiring an operation. It's a physical ailment. That's what Paul, it could be blindness, it could be a handicap. It's something. Now notice what Paul is saying here. 
that even though you have a handicap of physical, uh, something that's physically wrong, that would, uh, that would constitute being credited for suffering for Christ. If, if that infirmity or handicap is used for God. Case in point, does anybody remember in, I believe it's the Gospel of John, that, uh, that uh, God heals a blind man? He's, he's a young man, it seems. And uh, he, he, he healed him on the Sabbath day. And, and the Jews, the Pharisees, they had a problem with that. And uh, what the Lord did is he made some spittle, made some clay, rubbed it on his eyes, told him to go to a particular pool, wash it, and then he received his sight. And uh, the famous line is, for, you know, uh, that uh, before I was blind, but now I see. And so the Jew, uh, so the apostles asked Christ, why was that man blind from birth? Was it because of his sin or for the sin of his parents? And does anybody remember what Christ told them? Yeah, that handicap wasn't no punishment for anything. It was to be used for, what did Christ use that handicap? To bring, to bring glory to God. So now, if you come down with an illness or whatever, it could just be an illness and you're going to recover. But if you come down with a particular illness and it's used for the gospel of Christ, for the glory of God, that's the difference. So, is everybody that's blind suffer for the Lord? No. But if they use that particular handicap to bring glory to God, then, it, then, it, then it's accounted for that. Okay, the next one. What's the next type of uh, suffering that we could... Reproaches. Reproaches. Anybody know what a reproach is? Yeah, people just put their back in your face, telling you to shut up and get out. Get out of yeah, that's that could be. <clears throat> uh, uh, the most common reproach, a typical reproach, is: Does anybody ever say bad words to you? Uh, uh, in response, in response to you giving them the gospel, oh, yeah. it's an anger. It's, 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 it's an angry response. It's a fleshly response. In this, I could say that, yeah, I've suffered some reproaches. Okay? My, uh, uh, my father particularly reacted very, very violently and, uh, and, and very uh, viciously to the gospel of Christ. Said some very, 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 very bad things. So, but that that was a reproach. So, when you ever go out and you share the gospel with anybody, they ever respond yeah. like that? Mm -hmm. That's a reproach. That is something that you <laughs> suffered for Christ. That's a suffering for Christ. Somebody had a question? And did you have your hand there? Um, <clears throat> being lied about. Yeah, being lied about. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. There you go. I thought, oh boy, here's a new yeah. thing that I'm going to be hearing a lot. Yeah. Oh, we're going to. I think. I, I think God is is preparing uh, Americans for uh, American Christians for suffering. I think. I think you know, in God's view of of, of His internal plan, I think the rubber is going to start beating the road for Christians. If you notice in, in the news and in comments online, very, very anti-Christian, very anti-God. And That's so what? it's going to be coming down to a time that we're going to have to inflict that word rather. What are we going to do? Are the rather, are we going to be able to stand up to bring God the glory or will we yield? 
to our fleshly weakness. I think the time is coming. I think, like me personally, as an American, I think we've had it pretty easy. Other people in China, North Korea, uh, you know, countries like that, yeah, they know they know some suffering. What's the next type of suffering? Necessities. Necessities. What is necessities? Food and raiment. Needs. Medicine. Needs, right? Phys uh, mostly physical needs. Food, clothes, raiment. Certainly, we don't, in, in America, we, there's, do we have to ever scrounge for the next meal? Have to wonder where our next meal is coming? <laughs> maybe. Have to wonder where we're going to go to bed? Maybe coming. What's that? It may be coming. Yeah, it may be coming, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, babies, yeah. But as a whole, uh, we don't, this really doesn't apply to us too much. As a whole, or apply to me, I should say. I, I cannot, uh, I, I don't know your personal circumstance. But as a whole, not too many needs. But, uh, and we'll read, we'll read some other scriptures with Paul, that Paul was, at times, he was cold, he was wet, he was hungry. Paul had a lot of physical needs that he that he that he suffered through. Those needs, and we'll talk about that when we get to those verses. What's another kind of suffering that we do? When, uh, when I talk about there might be a time in this country that uh, the American Christians are going to suffer. Uh, that's another thing I think we might have to suffer is needs, because uh, so I think. I, it's not to me. It's not outside the realm of possibilities that that uh, uh, Christian churches are going to have to start paying some taxes or whatever, paying fines. Uh, 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 I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt it that if the government does come after some Christians uh, through through taxes and things like that, that's coming. So, what what's the next one? Persecution. Persecutions. Does anybody know what persecutions means? Huh? <clears throat> You're punished for your beliefs. Now, this is a big thing. We're going to start seeing persecution from the government. If you blew up a, 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 a Planned Parenthood site, what would happen? Mm -hmm. Huh? Oh, you got arrested. You'd see the world come down on you, right? If somebody attacks and burns an anti-abortion center or clinic, what happens? Nothing. Zip out. What is that? That's persecution. There's laws been been attempted many times to shut down <coughs> anti-abortion clinics anti-abortion alternatives. Those are always shut down or always attacked, but the abortion side itself never attacked. And if it is attacked, the full force of the, both the city, uh, all three, the city, state, and federal government will come flying after them like, like crazy. Even when it's exposed by film. I mean, yeah, exactly, video. exactly. Yeah. So, this persecutions, I believe persecutions are gonna start happening. So, so we will get to uh, enjoy some suffering here because of our faith. And the, other, the last one, so there's five of them. What's that? Distress. Distresses. Anybody know what distresses means? Anguish, anguish, okay. which I kind of find uh, not ironic, but if you're, if, if you start worrying, uh, 
If you start worrying a lot, if you start worrying a lot about the above, about infirmities, reproaches, necessities, persecutions, you're anguished. But then Christ tells us in the Gospels that if you're worried about stuff, what are you supposed to do? Cast your cares where? <laughs> Cast your cares. <clears throat> Be anxious for nothing. What's that? Be anxious for nothing, but with uh, give, uh, give thanks for yeah. nothing. Thanksgiving. So, and this screams out that in order for you, so you could take, you, you could take all this and try to handle it yourself, but what does God want you to do with it? He wants, yeah, cast your cares upon him. And if you yield, if you would if you would like to apply that rather to suffer persecution, then the grace is going to come. If you're going to take this all on your own and not yield to the Lord, then you're going to suffer. So, so I'll leave these up here, and then we'll kind of go through this. Uh, yes, Brother Frank. Isn't that why the Lord provided the, the armor? Yeah. Okay, so why? why let's go to, uh, to Luke chapter 6, verse 22. I, I'll read these here just for the sake of, uh, of convenience and time. It says, Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. <laughs> There's a suffering. You think that's going to start happening? Maybe it's happened to you already. It <laughs> says here, uh, Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil. You ever been called a Jesus freak? Yep. So when I when I got saved, I worked in a factory, and before I got saved, and I am very regretful of the life I led before I got saved. But before I got saved, I didn't have too much problem with other unsaved people uh, ha thinking favorably towards me. We'll just put it that way. But after I got saved. <laughs> I still working in the factory. Uh, this portion of scripture here directly applies. Uh, they shall separate you from their company. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And uh, they shall reproach you. I got called a lot of nice things. And uh, cast cast your name as evil, right? And then all the, you know, Jesus uh, Jesus may love you, but we all think you're a blank blank blank. I've heard a lot of that stuff. But, and I look back, and when I first got saved, is, and I can't speak for anybody else, I can only give my personal account. When I first got saved, is when I, now looking back, is when I suffered most of my, my suffering. Yeah. Uh, when I first got saved. Right? I lost just about all my friends. Amen. I lost about, just about all my relatives. And, and, I, and I know uh, through, through third-hand accounts or whatever at family gatherings and stuff, I know what some of my family members have said about me and stuff. Yeah. And so in the beginning, uh, you're just full. I was full of the peace and full of that grace. And, you didn't, and, and did I, and I can honestly say that I never once thought of any of that as suffering. Never. It never crossed my mind that that was suffering. But looking back now, I do. All right? I could, you could see it. You know, time has a way of, uh, of, of showing you things over time and stuff. Now, I don't know about your personal Christian march. If, where have you suffered the most in, your, in, in the time that you've been saved? Was it when you first got saved? Was it uh, when you started getting mature? Or when you were matured? But I, 
when I look at now of uh, my suffering when I was a young Christian versus my suffering as a quote-unquote mature Christian, no, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorrowful that uh, you know, I don't uh, experience that suffering, so, which is a scary thing to say. Mm -hmm. Luke 21, 17, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. <laughs> yeah, just tell any, tell any news reporter that you're a Christian and then you'll see what kind of, uh, how they slant <laughs> that interview with you. Uh, Matthew 5, 11, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and, you shall, and shall all manner of evil, uh, uh, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Uh, verse thir uh, thir Mark 13, 9, But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils and to synagogues, and ye shall be beaten, and shall be brought forth before rulers and kings for my name's sake, for a testimony against them. And were the apostles, did this happen to the apostles? Yeah. yeah. Amen. Let's go to John chapter, uh, chapter 15. And let's see, 18 through 25. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. <laughs> you think that's a correct statement? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my... Uh, uh, if they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all, all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them that uh, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin, he that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no other man did, they had not hid sin, for now have they both seen and hated me both and my father. But this cometh to pass, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. Mm -hmm. So what's Christ saying there? Why is why did the why did man hate Christ like they did? Why did the religious leaders hate Christ like they did? He pointed out their sin. And he took that veil self-righteousness away from them and they hated them for it and when when you witness to somebody and and try to remove that cloak and, and tell them that all all have sinned to come short of the glory of God what's usually a response you get well I follow the Ten Commandments yes <laughs> and, and I don't do it but I'd love to say okay <laughs> Can you list them for me in the proper order? Or any order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or any order. So, can you give me five? Can you give me six? Can you? So, uh, guarantee that not what you probably would never run into one person that is not saved and go down that list. So, but they follow. So, but what does that just say? Is that you're. You're revealing your, 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 your taking that cloak away, that self-righteousness away. And Christ did that. And when you're going to spread the gospel, that's what some of the things that you're doing. And uh, if the, that's why it's so important that the Holy Spirit is working within those people that you're talking to. Because if you're just talking, quote unquote, spirit to flesh, what, what kind of reaction you're going to get? You're going to get this big time. But if you're kind of talking spirit to spirit, if they're, the Holy Spirit is really working on that person, that's a whole different conversation. Yeah, it is. But when you're talking spirit to flesh, boy, you're, that's, that's when the knives come out. So, and uh, just, just for ha-has, has anybody had a, a, a violent or a very 
aggressive reaction when you spread the gospel, try to give the gospel to somebody? Right. Yeah. It's something to see. It really is. It really is something to see. Okay. We covered Acts chapter 9. All right. Uh, I'll read these here. It says uh, uh, in, in Philippians uh, chapter 2, they talk, uh, uh, Paul talked about Christ being obedient. And Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8, though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. <laughs> Which is, which is pretty basic. If, if you touch a hot stove, would you learn that that stove was hot? Yeah, you'd hope so. Yeah. So if somebody tells you don't touch the hot stove, are you going to touch the hot stove? That's where that rather comes in. Well, am I rather going to listen to them, or am I rather going to do that? So. But uh, it's, I find that astounding, uh, that verse in, in Hebrews. Uh, it's saying in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, <laughs> crowned with glory and honor, uh, that he made by grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom all things, uh, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Okay, let's go to, uh, we're just going to be wrapping up. All right, let's uh, kind of talk about this right now, and then we'll, we'll pick this up next week. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And this will set up Paul talking about his sufferings. So hopefully next week we'll wrap up what Paul's sufferings were, we'll talk about our sufferings and how to deal with them, and then we can kind of move on from all of this. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9, uh, 9 through 13, I believe. Yeah. So this portion of scripture was written around 54 AD, which means that Paul would have went on a uh, missionary journey with Barnabas, and uh, then he would have came back to Jerusalem, then he would have been back out with uh, Silas. Uh, for I think that God has set forth us the apostles last, as it was appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. I find that they're a spectacle to three things. To the world, to angels, and to men. When I think about the world is, is pretty easy to describe. To men, right, your fellow person, that's easy to describe. What do you think Paul's talking about when he says that he's a spectacle unto angels? Now, at this time frame, there's two types of angels in a spiritual sense or in it here in a minute. When, 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 when Satan got cast out of, uh, of heaven, was he the only one that got cast out? No. Yeah, how many <laughs> angels? Yeah. About a third. So it means, there means there's two thirds of the angels are still with God and a third have been thrown out. Okay. So the apostles are spectacles to angels. What angels are, is, are they referring to? Is Paul referring to? Fallen angels. Yeah. Okay, it goes on. We are fools for Christ's sake, but we are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. This is part of what Paul is experiencing for suffering. It says, even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place. Who wants to be an apostle? <laughs> Raise your hand. Okay. And I don't know why, but I go from zero to 60 in anger when I see that church van go by 
and the thing on the side says Apostle Paul Jones. <laughs> I go zero to six. It's like, you idiot. You're an apostle. Yeah, amen. There's no apostles today. No. Okay, we're, Sherry and I were just talking a little bit about what God's special treatment of the apostles were in the beginning. There's no apostles today. And when you think about, if you're an apostle, you, 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 you see these vans drive by, and it's, they look really hungry. They look really thirsty. They look pretty clothed to me. They don't look naked. They, right? they don't look like they've been buffeted at all. And uh, I'm sure they have a dwelling place. <laughs> I'm sure they have a very nice dwelling place. And so, uh, no, that's, that, to me, that's righteous anger. That's, that's a misuse. If I see that, I automatically know that church is whacked. Right? They, have, they have no concept of, uh, of, of Scripture. Okay. Uh, verse 12. In labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, <laughs> we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. Well, that's, that's the tough one there. Because when, when I get persecuted, do I take it? No, I'm not a slap in a cheek type of guy type of stuff. But what's Paul saying? You should. That's a tough one. That, that's a tough one for me. So, uh, you know, it goes on and he closes out in 13. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. Should finish up with verse 16. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I should, yeah, I should have included that. Yeah. So, so that was the apostles. How would you like that for the apostles' job? And it's just not Paul. He's talking about the apostle has an S on it. So he's talking about this is what they had to go through. But so, he supplied the grace for them to go through it. He did supplied the grace so so when we get up to glory uh i doubt very much matter of fact i know very much that would you go and ask peter or you go ask paul or you go ask john do you regret it <laughs> what are they going to say no 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 not in the least bit not in the least bit so okay so uh we'll Go and we'll learn about Paul's <laughs> physical sufferings uh, next week, and then we'll talk about our personal sufferings and how to deal with it, and then we can close this out. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. Brother Frank, you want to close us in a word of prayer? Lord, we uh, thank you for this day, and we thank you for this lesson. Lord, uh, if we get through the persecution that we're facing, we know that your grace will be all sufficient. Amen. And Lord, help us just to stand with the full honor of God, keep moving forward, be presented to God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.